Welcome back pilots to another video and part three in our series as we look about the fundamentals of Star Citizen's combat systems. In this lecture you'll understand cone fire, the difference between lag and lead pips, roll aim, the missile systems and countermeasure systems that go with them, and lastly precision mode. At the end of this you'll understand that this is a basic understanding of the complete weapon systems and mechanics for Star Citizen. The first thing we need to understand about the current system for gunnery is cone fire. Cone fire is, as you see depicted here, a percentage of damage application depending on the distance. The numbers in this scenario are not indicative of the actual tuning of the game, which will change from patch to patch and weapon to weapon. It's just a basic example that the longer range you go, the more damage you no longer apply to your target. Even though the bullet is going to do the same amount of damage as you apply damage at 1,000 meters, the fact is you're going to have less bullets hitting the target. On weapons that are designed for anti-fighter, that cone is saturated with a much higher density, which means the amount of bullets in that space is significantly higher, which means your chance to hit is also higher. But if you want to apply the maximum amount of damage, you must close to within the minimum weapon distance depending on the profile of the ship. So, for example, if you were shooting at a Vandal Blade, at the point where the wing tips meet the size of the cone is, in my opinion, where you'd get the optimal range or optimal distance for the weapon system. In this example, it's probably around the 400 meter mark. But if you were to engage a smaller ship like a Fury or Archimedes or Merlin, the distance in which you'd have to close onto the target would also include closing distance to within less than 200 because the physical size of ship is going to offset depending on the size of the cone that you're engaging with. Most people in current model right now when it comes to Star Citizen, especially with the new master mode stuff, is most people engage from too far of a distance. If you are engaging from a thousand meters, understand that you are getting significantly less damage on target than if you were to hold your fire and close to within 500 to release a significantly larger payload of damage in a short amount of time. Understand that this is the gunnery system that we have now. So distance and range has everything to do with the time to kill and the time to kill dramatically dependent on the saturation zones and physical profile size of the ship that you are shooting at. In layman's terms, if you want to kill it, get closer and try not to telegraph your shots from too far away because you just give the enemy time to find out who's engaging them and not do any meaningful damage. Once you've decided on a distance to engage with, we need to understand the type of aiming system that we're going to use. What is the difference between lag pip and lead pip? To put simply, the lag pip and the lead pip is a visual representation of the predicted impact point, otherwise known as the PIP. The calculation mathematically is the identical calculation between the lag PIP and the lead PIP. The difference is the lead PIP and the lag PIP is gonna change the way you visualize the target. So for example, if we are looking at this example here, we are looking at a lead pip system. The white arrow indicates the nose of my ship and the barrel of my guns. In this example here, it's flipped. The nose of my ship is identical and I'm still on target, but we're using what's known as a lag pip. Notice how my horn is orientated so that in order to get on target, I'd have to move my ship to the right of its yaw. This would be an incorrect position. I would need to roll into the shot. But the pipper system I'm using is just an assist, and I will clarify this, an assist to help you understand where you should start to point your nose. And once you're able to actually get on target, you'll start to see that the closer you get, you might start to see multiple pipper systems. This is showing you where the barrels of each of your guns are facing. As you get closer to the target, you're going to see very clearly the separation between these different weapons. Now, fixed assist is something that every weapon system in the game has, and it works like this. 
wherever the barrel of your gun is facing in order to get to the proper solution let's say your bullet only needed to nudge a few degrees let's say one and a half degrees to the right or to the left every barrel has a one and a half degree fixed assist system that allows to bend the bullet towards the proper solution it's essentially bullet bending or bullet magnetism that we've seen in games like halo this helps with targets so as we watch this lead pip example we can clearly see that as long as i get close enough to the solution of fire the fixed assist is going to pull the proper solution directly on to where the pipper is basically what's being visually represented is a small circle but what's actually happening is that circle is about three times the size and I'm hitting the target no matter what. Lead pip solutions are very popular, especially for newer pilots, because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. It's quite simple, just pull your nose onto the circle and pull the trigger. But there's one thing about lead pips that I find a lot of people, especially new pilots, that don't even realize that they're doing it. It's called being pip focused. You want to resist the urge to stare at the little box and instead, Keep your eyes focused on the enemy fighter and what it's doing and allow yourself to get into the proper position. This is why lag pips, in my opinion, are a superior tool but requires more training, more awareness, and more knowledge of your ship and systems than the typical lag or lead pip system. If you're using something like a turret, the lead pips are typically the best because you don't have control over the platform itself as it moves around space. That's your pilot's job. So I recommend using lead pip systems if you're inside a turret because the control is not yours. You just have to aim onto the target and fire. In that case, lead pip works just fine. But if you're piloting in a fighter, I suggest you use lag pips and develop the strength, coordination, skill, and awareness to get yourself in the proper position while keeping your eyes specifically focused on the target, which is much easier to do with lag pip systems. As you watch these examples, I want you to ask yourself the question, am I looking at the lead pip or am I looking at the ship itself? While I'm watching the lag pip demonstration, are you looking at the enemy fighter or are you looking more at the pip system? The answer should be always look at the enemy fighter. The pip system is only there as an assist. It is not a true shot. So as we stated before, the impact points will change depending on the distance you are to the target. This is due to the fact that each barrel of the gun has its own impact point. The farther you are away, the more your computer system has the ability to merge those shots together. But again, in this example, you'll see here we have three distinct impact points. This is due to two reasons. One, the weapons I'm using on my wingtips are Mantis, which means they're ballistic size 3 repeaters which allows me to have a lower velocity projectile speed than my wing guns. And as I get closer to my target, the differences between the weapons in terms of how physically wide they are dispersed on my ship start to become more apparent. And so the impact point starts to become wider depending on the wingspan of my ship. So as we get closer, we start to see the divergence of some pips lead pips will have the same thing and so will lags depending on what position they're in but don't panic understand which weapon system that you're pulling onto target and which one you want to fire if you have multiple weapon groups you can set them in your mfds and you can apply them to the different trigger squeezes on your joysticks or trigger presses on your mouse to put it as simply as i can the farther you get away from your target the more the weapon speeds will be pronounced and the closer you get to the target the more the physical position of where the weapons are placed on your ship from wingtip to wingtip will become apparent. Understand that this is mostly with fixed weapon systems that you'll see these disparities, but with gimbaled weapon systems, that will not be the case. I always recommend using fixed weapon systems since you just get more bang for your buck, although you do require more skills to apply damage. So now that we understand the different types of PIP systems, the different types of disparities of weapon speeds, we need to talk about the most important skill when it comes to applying any damage on any ship, and that is roll aim. This example here is what's called a perfect shot. 
you'll notice that the nose of my ship, um, where I'm tracking, is not always on the actual lead tip itself. You'll notice that as he turns into a corkscrew, I'm actually leading the lead pip. This is due to how the pip system calculates its shot. The target pipper system does not predict roll. It only shows a predicted impact point based on what the current vector of the ship is. You'll notice that the red line and the box attached to where he's supposed to aim is moving with the ship's angle. But as the angle starts to change and becomes steeper, you'll realize that I, using the green line, am predicting that he's going to move through that turn steeper than I think he is, and thus I'm going to apply more damage. The farther a target is away, the more prediction needs to be applied. I'll say that again. The farther the target is away, the more prediction needs to be applied. The thing with cone fire is it's going to, I guess you could say, make it a little easier to apply damage from long range just by saturating so many bullets into a tight space. But the reality is you're not going to be applying a substantial amount of damage. And if you don't close to within proper gun ranges, you're just not going to get the kill. Here it is again from the perspective of the pilot. And you'll notice that as he starts to turn into these corkscrews, I'm leading the lead pip. Now, this example here is a bit dramatic because I want you to see the difference of how you have to lead compared to where the actual target pipper is telling you. So in reality, it might be a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left of the little circle pip, which is telling him to fire. But because this is more exaggerated, I want you to understand what's going on here. Also, we spoke previously in a previous video about dominant axis. And what's happening here is you'll notice that I'm always constantly orientating my gladius so that I'm pulling my nose up onto the target. This is for two reasons. One, the turn rate in pitch is faster. And two, the jerk profile or the responsiveness of how fast the thrusters respond to micro movements is better. And ESP or enhanced stick precision, which allows joysticks to be more competitive against other aiming systems like mouse, is going to lock on or feel the groove. You'll feel this difference when you start to fly. And as you start to pull your wings in line with the vector of travel, you're gonna be feeling that groove as it catches. I cannot stress enough how incredibly important roll aiming is in the master modes and the fundamentals of how Star Citizen does its gunnery. You must roll into the target. If you don't roll into the target, you're simply going to be finding it very difficult to track. A lot of rookie pilots and new pilots to the game don't understand this concept and they find aiming to be extremely difficult. You as a pilot need to make your solution on target the easiest as possible. And the best way to do that is to roll aim. So let's take a look at this example. This is an example of what's called being pip focused, which we talked about previously in the video. Pip focused means I have my nose directly on the little box which is telling me to shoot. You'll notice that I'm only hitting him as he crosses the flight paths rather than when he's in a steep turn. So as the enemy starts to move around, I'm aiming on a quote unquote perfect solution. I should be hitting. I'm aiming where the game tells me to aim. I'm pulling the trigger. Surely this problem must be hit registration. But it's not. To make it very simple, if you'd like to apply more damage, get closer. And as you get to the 500s or higher ranges, 500 to 1000, understand that the PIP system is not telling you the truth and you as a pilot have to adjust for the inconsistencies and apply damage. Okay, let's move on. Missiles are an important part of Star Citizen's combat. Although slightly incomplete at the moment and in much need of some overhaul, the system is quite simple. You have a minimum and a maximum range, which can be depicted in your HUD display when you select the missiles. A small little line to the left of where the missiles are selected will tell you the minimum and maximum locking and weapons distance. It should also be noted that you can lock on missiles independent of your nose. If you have a eye tracker or head tracking system, you realize that you can lock missiles on off of target. So use this to your advantage depending on what point in the situation you want to fire missiles. Also understand that in order to get a full lock, that white circle has to be at its tightest function. And when it's at its tightest function, you can fire the missile systems. 
Typically, you want to fire missiles from anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 meters. Anything less or more than that, it seems to be less effective. In this shot here, we are firing at 5,000 meters at a target with four size 1 IR missiles. The target does not flare and thus is struck by the missiles. To increase the amount of armed missiles, the default key binding is G once you're in missile mode and left all G to cancel the amount of missiles you have and reset to zero. You got to understand that firing groups of missiles does not increase your chance of hitting depending on when you fire it. It only increases the payload in which you're going to strike the target with. Also understand that there are three types of missiles and there are also three types of signatures associated to every ship in the game. And those signatures are at the top of your HUD and tell you what your current signature status is. On the left, you have the heat signature, which is IR or infrared. The best weapon or missile system to use against this signature is IR missiles, which are the little flame symbols for missiles. Cross section missiles are best used for the center icon here, which is your ship's cross section, which is a little triangle with the centerpiece. The best system to use against this signature is cross-sectional missiles, which are like the little Wi-Fi symbol. And finally, you have electromagnetic, which is the little thunderbolt. And the best missiles to use against that are EM missiles, which are also a little thunderbolt symbol. As you begin your journey in combat, you'll understand that one thing is very, very important, and that is your countermeasure systems. You have two types of countermeasures. One is decoys, and the other is noise. As we can see here, we are sitting inside what's called a noise cloud. And as I drop these noise bombs, I'm basically hiding myself from the signatures, the radars, and everything else. As I sit inside this cloud, I can no longer be targeted and seen. However, I can still be visually picked up. Once I gain speed, you'll realize that I can drop decoys, and I can increase and decrease, just like the missile counts, for how many countermeasures I want to drop in one go. If you have a large signature, you're going to want to drop more flares per burst and you want to resist the urge of dropping a single flare one at a time. A good rule of thumb is to set your burst count to three, which is an absolute minimum. It's going to be more likely for you to flare the missile off or quote unquote decoy the missile off if you have three flares or three decoys being dropped at one time instead of just one. Another strategy is you can break the missiles tracking by going into nav mode and keeping your speed as high as possible while maintaining a tight corkscrew. Keep your nose pointed just off of your vector indicator, which is a little greater than less than sign you see on my nose, and eventually the missile will pass you a couple times, run out of fuel, and eventually detonate. It's not the preferred way of avoiding missiles. You definitely want to do it via flares or decoys, but if all else fails and you have too many missiles on you, one of those strategies is gaining a tremendous amount of speed and maintaining a roll nice and tight to keep the missile guessing as to where you're going. Just like the lead pip systems, missiles are going versus the predicted impact point. And if you roll, the missile has a hard time predicting where you're going to go and thus causes the missile to miss. The last point I'd like to make here is understanding precision mode. Precision mode is a new system being brought in for 323 in master modes, which allows us to essentially ADS or zoom as if we're using a weapon. As you can see in this example, I'm closing to within distance of a hammerhead and receiving some fire. And I don't want to stay within that danger zone of the hammerhead because it's a good chance I'm going to get blasted. So I'm going to back off and move to a safe distance where I can't be effectively engaged and enter what's called precision mode. Once in precision mode, you'll notice that there is a adaptive zoom. The ship that I'm engaging, certain components will be highlighted depending on if I'm able to scan the target or not. And from this point, I'll be able to engage based on my reticle. Notice how the weapons are being automatically led in terms of where their lead pip is being put. And so the computer is automatically gimbling the weapons I'm using based on the precision spot I am targeting. So all I need to do is place the cursor directly on the target that I want to shoot at, specifically where on the target I want to shoot at, and my guns will automatically auto-lead to make the perfect shot. It also allows the spread or the cone of fire to be significantly reduced, allowing me to engage from very long range, and in this case taking out both the hammerhead turrets from a safe distance before any damage was applied to myself.
This is a controversial mode, which I and many pilots are interested to see how it develops in the future. But understand that you can enter this mode by going to controls and binding a weapon key press of your choice on whether you're using joysticks or not to ADS toggle. The default for a mouse and keyboard is left alt and mouse button. You have now reached the end of part three, gunnery, missiles, and precision mode. Hopefully this content was easy to understand. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord at any time. And hopefully we'll see you for part four as we move on through the course. My name is Avenger1, and I'll see you in the next one.